we're now going to build linear build models from linear data. And so we're going to start with some description of a problem. And so here's our problem. It's a cost function. The simplest cost function we can come up with that's linear is c of x equals ax plus b, where b is some fixed cost of operating a business, and a is the cost of making one additional item. So suppose that a bicycle manufacturer has daily fixed costs of $2,000. So whether it's open or closed, or if he makes any bikes or not, he spends $2,000. The, each bicycle costs $80 to make. That's in parts, that's in electricity, that's in all sorts of things that go into that. So with this, we need to figure out what our cost function is. That's the, what question A is. So to answer A, we're just going to take our C of X, and we're going to set it equal to our A is our per item cost, which is 80, X plus our daily cost, which is 2,000. That's our fixed cost. So here is our cost function. B now asks, what is the cost of manufacturing five bicycles in a single day? And so this gets a little bit trickier because we're asked to make five bikes. So that's an input. We want to know what is C of five. And so we plug five in. 80 times five plus 2,000, which 80 times 5 is 400, plus 2,000 is 2,400. So, if I make 5 bikes in a day, it'll cost me $2,400 to run my business that day. The last question is just the opposite. Instead of knowing how many, bike, or knowing how many bikes ahead of time and figuring out the cost, I know the cost. I know that we spent $2,800. So I know that c of x equals 2800, which means that I know that 80x plus 2000 equals 2800. So now I have to solve for x. So we start by subtracting 2000 and get 80x equals 800. Divide by 80, and we get x equals 10. One more thing I want to talk about with this problem before we move on is to keep in mind that we have a domain. It's implied that we, ha we can make zero to an infinite number of bikes. We have to go to infinite because it doesn't give any, any other constraints. It doesn't help tell us how long it takes to make a bike or anything. But we know we can't make less than zero bikes in a day. So with this, we have our simple cost function. The next type of function that we're going to look at is called straight line depreciation. So let me get the problem up here. And it's a big one. And so we'll work through this a little bit in pieces. But here's what we're looking at. The book value of an, of an asset, such as a building or a piece of machinery or a car, that a company uses to create its balance sheet. How much does it, is it worth to the company? Some companies use a straight line depreciation so that their assets devalue at the same rate every year. This means that they can figure out when it's time to sell something back. So suppose that Pearson Publishing just purchased a new fleet of cars for its sales force at a cost of $29,400 per car. They want this to depreciate over seven years so that it's depreciating by $4,200 per year. So our model is going to be the value, so here we go with A, the value at a given time is equal to the initial value, 29,400, minus 4,200 times the number of years, whatever year it is that we're asking for. Now it's asking for an implied domain. We know that for B, the domain starts at zero years. That's the, the fewest years that we're going to keep the car. And then we're only going to keep it for seven years, so we stop at seven. So the implied domain, because of this over seven year statement, is 0 to 7. Now we just need to do a couple more. We're going to evaluate what is B of 3, because that's 3 years. That's our input. So this is 29,400 minus 4,200 times 3, which is 29,400 minus 12,6, 
which is 16, 8. So that's how much the vehicle is worth to us after three years, $16,800. The next question is when does V of T equal $12,600? So we're going to replace V of T with the 29,400 minus 4,200T equals 12,600. I'm going to break the calculator out for this one because we're going to subtract 29,400 from both sides and we're going to get Twenty-nine four hundred. So minus forty-two hundred t equals minus sixteen eight. When we divide both sides by minus forty-two hundred, they're both going to become positive, and we can see very quickly that t is four years. And so that's using straight line depreciation as well as story problems in it, and building our models from the story problem.